Well, what can cause a soul to be shipwrecked? False teaching. And the most dangerous shipwreck is not one that's merely physical where you have water and sharks to deal with. The most dangerous shipwreck concerning God's perspective and our immortal soul is that our spiritual life be without the anchor of hope and truth that's in Christ. Well, that takes us to how do we avoid, as we get into this time in the world when the world is getting darker, when society is crumbling in every way, the societal structure, the family units, truth, I mean, everything's becoming relative, everything's being reinterpreted, there are no absolutes. How do we deal with that when truth is dying around us? Well, Jesus said, the way we know that we can make it is in Hebrews 6. So turn now from Timothy to Titus. Go to the right again. We're going the right direction. Philemon, Hebrews chapter 6. Jesus warned us that at the end, there was going to be not only these, these false teachers, these, these signposts pointing the wrong way. That's outside and that's, that's to the loss. But do you know what? He said inside the church there are going to be the same things. There are going to be those who are sowing tares. Those who are trying to turn the church into a group of counterfeits just like out there they're teaching this false gospel. And so Jesus said watch out when counterfeits multiply, when false believing uh, fake Christians multiply, you know that the end is near. And when that happens, it's time for believers to brace themselves because the waves of false doctrine and the attack on the church will only increase. And so these are days when we who know and love the Lord Jesus should reach into our hearts and re-examine what it is that holds us. And what holds us is the anchor line, and we should hold it tight and feel it holding us securely. Hebrews chapter 6, and I want to read with you from verse 11 down through verse 20. And I hope that this passage will deeply settle on our hearts as we allow the Spirit of God to open it to us. Verse 11, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. That's our heritage as believers. Full assurance. And I told you this morning, Full is the word uh, plerao, uh, which means fullness, and phoreo, which is an overflowing. It, it's, like, it's just like being clothed with something and have it just overflowing. It's just, it's just a beautiful word to overflowingly wear or hold or possess or to have. And he says, I want you to know that you are assured in Christ until the end. Verse 12, that you do not become sluggish. But imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. For when God made a promise, verse 13, to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, that's Abraham, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by a greater and an oath, for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, two unchanging things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation. That is great, firm encouragement that it will hold us uh, it will strengthen us it will hold us up this strong it's a beautiful word strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us we're going to examine all these words it's just this is a very powerful passage verse 19 this hope we have and here's what we're looking at tonight as an anchor of the soul our soul is, as I said this morning, lassoed. Uh, wherever you think your soul is, that's the immaterial part of us, it's the eternal part, it's, a, it's another word for that part of us which, which is indwelt by the spirit, we call it our spiritual mind, our, our spirit, our soul, whatever you want to call it, non-material part of you. Our soul, look at this, is anchored, and this anchor is sure and steadfast, that means that, that nothing can happen to it, and look at this, which enters... The presence behind the veil. That is a very powerful, powerful... I mean, Jesus Christ himself is standing guard over our anchored soul. And no one can defeat him. 
I mean, this is where the, what we are criticized for, our uh, persuasion, they say, you're the one saved, always save people. Well, I'm thankful that once Christ saves me, Christ always saves me, okay? I don't know what they mean by when they criticize, but that's what the Bible means. It means whoever he saves can't get lost. And that's because, right here, look what it says in verse 19. It's inside the veil, it's already home. And then look at this, where the forerunner has entered for us. Who's the forerunner? Even Jesus. And it doesn't just say Jesus, it says he's become the high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, 